So now we'll discuss the naive matrix multiplication algorithm. And if you haven't seen this before, if a reminder is useful, recall that when we want to multiply two n by n matrices A, B to get the resultant matrix C, we basically have to take the dot product of the row vectors of A with the column vectors of B. So for example, if I want to get the very first term in C, so if I want to get C11, I have to do the dot product of the first vector in row vector in A and I have to multiply that by the first column vector in B and so this is going to be the row and this is going to be the column and there's very different notations for this that you might see so we should probably use some care that for example one of these would be transpose uh, of the other so but this this is fine for for what it is for now so and we'd also with c++ we'd be using zero base indexing but the fact of the matter is is that for c ij you take the dot product of a row i vector and b column j vector and what we're doing for that that means basically we line up the a row vector and the b column vector and we multiply each of the terms and just add them. So that's it, precisely what we're doing in these nested loops here. Okay, so now I just want to do the analysis of the code that's written, and you don't necessarily need to worry about doing the matrix multiplication algorithm in terms of the linear algebraic terms that I just mentioned, we can trace through this precisely in the code. So what we're trying to do is find T then, and, and just as an aside too, for the dot product is sometimes written just like that too. Sometimes it's fine. So now let's trace through this code in order to discern that. So we're going through I going from 0 to n minus 1, and then j going from 0 to n minus 1. And first we're just initializing that the term in the result matrix should be 0. We could have initialized this in a separate loop if we had wanted to do that, just initialize the return rate, but here we're doing inside. And then we are going, as k goes from 0 to n minus 1, we are taking here is where we're taking the row of A and we go through each element of the row of A and we multiply it by the corresponding value in the column of B. So that is what I was illustrating. So this represents the row and this represents the column. And we are multiplying them together and then adding it to the term for the CIJ term of the resultant matrix. Okay. So now let's trace through what is happening in this algorithm. So we have this statement where we're multiplying and we're finding the term to add to the term for cij, this is just, you see, this is constant time, some constant. And then we have this loop. And this loop is for k going from 0 to n minus 1. And I'm going to 
ignore that this term right here, I'm just going to comment it out because we could have initialized here. But there's another reason why I'm ignoring it is because the dominating term is going to be that inner for loop. Just initializing the the matrix C is is constant time, that one step right there. So we're, we're not going to include it, otherwise our expression will get quite messy. And now we want to consider that we're going to do that inner for loop for each of the outer loops. So we have J going from 0 to n minus 1, and then we have this loop here with I going from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, so we have our three nested loops. And now you'll notice that we have an expression for T of n. And now I'm switching to green because we want to find it as a closed form. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve the innermost summation. And that's the summation indexed by k. So we have k going from 0 to n minus 1, and we are adding c. So that means I'm adding c n times. So that innermost summation indexed by k becomes n times c, and then I still have the summation as j goes from 0 to n minus 1, and i goes from 0 to n minus 1. So then, once again, I am adding n c n times for the j index for loop, so this is going to become n squared c. and it's going to be the summation as i goes from 0 to n minus 1. And now for the i indexed summation, we are going to be adding n squared times c n times, so we are going to get n squared, excuse me, n cubed times c. Once we have t of n expressed in terms of just n, and C, we have a closed form. Now, this closed form we now need to put in an asymptotic bound, and this is big O of n cubed. So we have a constant time n cubed, but now we need to convince ourselves that we also have a lower bound. And our lower bound comes from the fact that this code behaves the same on any input. You'll notice that for any A and B, this code is going to run every single line. So we know that it is going to take at least big omega of n cubed because for any input, code requires some constant times n cubed steps, and because of this, we can change our big O to be theta because we know that there exists an input requiring at least big omega of n cubed steps, so therefore we have our big O and our big omega, and we can say that is theta of n cubed. So I'll just put that, this implies the, the big omega. Now, this is an interesting problem because the code that we just traced, this is called the naive matrix multiplication algorithm. But we have shown that the naive algorithm takes big theta, big omega of n cubed and big O of n cubed. But we can observe that this problem in general, we know that matrix multiplication requires big omega of n squared. And the why is that at the very least we have to be able to write our matrix C, which is the output matrix, 
And the best known algorithm for matrix multiplication is two big O to the two point three seven, I think. About two point three seven. And you'll notice that there's a gap. So what people who are working on matrix multiplication do is they're trying to bridge this gap between the best known upper bound on the problem and what we know would have to be the lower bound on the problem. So this is a more general dealing with matrix multiplication, sort of what complexity theorists and people who work on algorithms worry about. But for what we've just shown for the naive matrix multiplication algorithm, that is n cubed data of n cubed, especially as we had just shown it. Now, we want to consider sequential loops. So what is the runtime of this code? So the big takeaway is, is if we have sequential loops, we just add the work that we are doing. So let's take a look at one of these loops. So we have three loops, and I'm going to call them t1, t2, and t3. So we're going to have t of n is equal to t1. So that's for the first loop, T2 for the second, and T3 for the third. And we'll see that they each take a constant amount of time, and the summation for their index, and then constant amount of time, and then the summation for the index, and then finally a constant amount of time, and the summation for the index. So the key point is when we have sequential loops, we just add the amount of work done for each loop. So we're going to have three summations here that are not nested. And you'll see we have our summations indexed by i, j, and k. They each do a constant amount of work. And now we can do the work of putting these in the closed form. So the first summation is just going to be n times c, because we're adding c n times. And the second will be n times c, because we're adding c n times. And the final summation will also be n times c, because we're adding c n times. So you'll notice that we have 3 c n is our closed form. We can put this in asymptotic notation. So we have two constants, so that's a constant times n, so we have big O of n, and we can be sure that this is indeed theta because for any input we will require the same amount of time, and that's because for any input. So we have our big omega from that too.